In today's video, we'll be going over why incinerating Snap and Dawn Course together is a war crime in itself, and how you too can avoid the Geneva Convention and burn away everyone that annoys you. Now, on a slightly more serious note, the following build is one of the many powerful solar builds that is capable of doing a large amount of damage through melee and super alone. The stacks of scorching initiatives alone could take out a mini boss within seconds, and though I've seen a few people cover this already, not many have given the pros and cons to such a build and end game content. Which is why you are here, and why I will bless you with my knowledge and thoughts on the build itself. But you know what else does not lack the conviction to burn the world down? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn your notifications as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we'll be using Dawnblade as that's generally how it works best with Dawn Chorus. Thanks to Zero 3.0, Warlords can gain mini energy back by simply setting things alight, and will get mini energy back just by doing so alone. Now, you may have seen a few of my videos around melee only builds, and if you haven't, I do recommend you watch them so you can get a quick breakdown of how they work. With this build, we will be utilising Dawn Chorus exotic trait and the Skyburner's Oath Bird effect to gain mini energy back and have infinite incinerate snap on hand. This is what I would call a unique twist from what we have seen before, as it allows you to instantly gain melee back up no matter how low your strength stat is, or if you don't have any mods based around this area. But to be successful, you'll still need the basics. So for the aspects, I have Touch of Flame that allows solar grenades and other grenades to change the way they work. You'll then want heat rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide, and it will grant you mini energy back while in the air. For fragments, you'll then want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more scorch to targets, Ember of Torches where power of many hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant, Ember of Searing where scorch targets grant mini energy back, and Ember of Benevolence where applying restoration, cure, or radiant to allies grant increased grenade, melee, and class ability regen for a short duration. For stats, you'll want 80 to 100 resilience, 50 plus in intellect, and 50 to 60 in strength. These are the only main stats we want to invest in further for better survival in the game, and this is only because of how simple the build is. The key mods to have here are Powerful Wealth for plus 2 in worlds created, a Font of Might for a 25% solar weapon buff, a Font of Wisdom for a plus 50 in intellect, Mini Worldmaker for creating worlds via melee, and while our life for increased health regen over a short duration. Unlike the exotic gauntlet, Dawn Cores will offer players more bang for the buck when applications are applied. You can scorch targets with the super, do more damage with said super, and get many energy back just from scorch targets alone. All of this when combined with a weapon that allows you to scorch in demand can result in mass ignition triggering for a large overall damage, which is plentiful in design. There is no cooldown for this, so you can do this as many times as you like. But you simply need to remember that the higher the difficulty, the harder it becomes to scorch and build abilities back up, which does become apparent down the line. So from here, you then want to invest into your weaponry, which I have two preferences to recommend. To start, we have NOD with Encore and Vorpal Weapon, which will help with countering the tougher and close range combatants that my secondary will struggle with. Works a charm on specific targets, but is swapped out for a fusion if you want something a bit more harder hitting. Next is Skyburner's Oath, which got a slight adjustment to allow you to scorch targets when hit fine with it. Now this is very big for scorch based builds, as its effects will work the same way as its fragment states, you gain mini energy back from scorch defeats. Not only that, but also means you have a constant source of continuous damage being applied to whoever is hit by it, which you can then trigger the ignition effects through your powered melee. This is incredible when you consider how easy it is to use its effects, and although slightly weak on most combatants, it can still do some hefty damage when you add everything else together. Of course, if you don't have this, then getting a weapon with incandescent is also the best option to go with, if you prefer a legendary over exotic use. For heavy, I recommend you go with anything solar based so you can make full use of the damage buff you have going, which will be applied to them. I have Coduella with auto and holster, and last impression for a max damage solar weapon to use on mini bosses to bosses alike. And not many of you here will have this weapon, as it is quite an old seasonal weapon, and hasn't been in rotation for a while, so you'll have to find something else. Galahorn is a good choice to have if you don't plan to use Skyburners as damage it inflicts is one of the highest around against most other rocket launchers. If not, then the Parasite Grenade Launcher is another good shell for max damage alone, along with 1k voices and sleep assimilate. If however, you want to keep your exotic secondary, 
then try and get the new chain of command heavy machine gun as you can roll with osmosis and demolitionists for a nice easy source of grenades without needing to spec anything else. For the stats, there are only two areas to worry about first before exploring elsewhere, and that is intellect and strength. These are the two areas that will be used a lot within the build, so if you plan to make this build dominant, you need to focus on these two first and foremost. So what do you need to do? Firstly, for intellect, you want to keep this at 50 or increase it depending on the mod you plan to add to it. If you keep it at 50, then you plan to use the Thunder Wizard mod that will grant you a plus 50 intellect cooldown once you collect the well. This is the best and safest option to pick since it requires less focus and is more user friendly. Since worlds will be created by melee and the flame harvesting mod, which allows us to weapons to create worlds much faster than armaments, you'll always have a super ready within the first few minutes of a game. Now, alternatively, if you want to be more hands-on, then you want to add on the hands-on mod, which will grant you super energy when you melee. Now, do you remember when I said the build can get its full melee back by simply scorching? Well, this is what I mean by it and how you can utilize this further. From there, you can then add on the Harmonic Siphon mod to create orbs of power on the sewer kills, and you'll get your super up in no time. If you want, you can add both of the two options together for a mitch match of things and get the best of both worlds. For your strengths, you can leave this area to around 50 to 60, as the passive region is practically covered. From aspects of fragments and mods, everything here will give some energy to your midi, and you'll never have to worry about needing to slot out an important mod to make it work. This is perfect if you don't like min-maxing too much and just want to get the main things done while still having room to slot in anything else. One example of this is the Absolution mod which gives me a nice boost of energy to all my abilities when collecting all the power. It's simple, easy to do and doesn't cost a lot. For your resilience and recovery, go for whatever is best for you as nothing particular is required although 100 resilience helps a lot. Left over wise, we are focus and strike for getting class ability back via melee kills and solo formation where your ignitions do increase damage and increase radius. Now as we have the bits covered, here are the mods all compiled into the list for quick viewing. For head we have mind resilience, harmonic cipher times 2 and battle for our mods. Arm we have resilience, focus and strike for the might mod. Chest we have resilience, arm of the dying sun because of damn and for the wisdom mod. Leg we have mind resilience, absolution and melee wallmaker mod. Bond we have solo formation, flame harvesting and world of life mod. I want to compare this build to the last one we did, which was around the Necrotic Grip, and this dot damage build up from there. Both have their strength with building damage up in a small or large burst, and can do some hefty damage when left to its own devices for X amount of time. In a small area, the builds can run havoc from a single shot or melee, and the rest is history from there. And shockingly, can work well if used against a major to boss level combatants if you trigger the right things to do so. What makes this build a bit more superior though is how ingrained the Scorch theme is for the build. From melee to grenades to super, everything will be inflicting this damage and will be netting you the results you'll be looking for. You can add on the exotic helmet, an exotic weapon or perk and name, and as long as you activate the effects, the amount of things that catch fire can really simplify most content you play. Take Gambit where you can instantly alight the majority of the you face and they cause a huge explosion that will wipe them out in a single blast. This can be useful when you want to collect most quickly and without hesitation. Another example of this can be Nightfalls on Legend here. Great for one shot at miners and then inflicting heavy burns to majors to quicken their deaths. At the same time, you'll be getting damage buffs, health back and energy back non-stop. Its effects are truly wonderful once you get the ball rolling, and it's a lot harder for bands to fight back while on fire. Even the super is viable now, although I have been hearing mixed thoughts on it as it's more limited in its usage, and the damage is way weaker than what it was before. I'm not entirely sure what Bungie has done, but through community tests, the super does less damage than what the Titan Thunder Crash does, even though it should be near on par. It's honestly a great setup with a few ways that players can improve on it further with a few tinkering around with it. It's just the super needs more to it to make it truly viable as a DPS option if that's what you're looking for. As it stands, it's good for small things and that's generally it. Still, I recommend you try this build if you've been enjoying the Scorch feature with your Warlocks as there's still a lot we can still learn from it. And the main basis of the build is practically fun, easy to use and great for endgame. Just don't expect a lot from them super, that's all I ask. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. 
and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content. If you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you all in the next one.